Okay, hi, and we're back. Nikki, Arcio, Linda, Bonanno. Um, so, I have a challenge for you first. Okay, this is the same day. Sorry, let's talk about my hair thing first. I'm a little tired. So, the hair thing in the last video today, I tried it one way, and I just didn't like that I had to keep going like this. But anyway, I put it on this way. We're going to try something new. All right. That being said, this is the same day. And um, I want to actually try to accomplish the goal of removing my previous work, placing it on hangers, and putting it on that rack. But I have a challenge for you. From that last video to this video, and uh, you have to figure out which two videos those are. Um, something changed in this scene, and I'm very strategic about my scenes. And yes, I think it is very funny that I am looking up all of my mannequin's dresses. I mean, I like my workspace to be a piece of art at all times. Boop. That being said, what changed? If you can figure it out, please put it in the comments, subscribe, and um, that way I'll be able to tell you if you're correct. If you're correct, what can I give you? I'll give you something. I'll give you a special prize. I'll mail it to you, okay? And it'll be something that I made, okay? All right, here we go. Time to take the clothes off the mannequins. That is your first clue. This one might stay on because I don't need a child mannequin for my next project. So this mannequin is just going to stand by over here. Yes, yeah, stand by. Let me tell you a funny little story while I'm doing this. So uh, you know you work in entertainment and as a stagehand in many facets or whatever I do. Um, when you call the bed frame, see, it's still hard for me to find the word, an understructure. Understructures are things that hold stages up and I build those too, but dang it. I just told my mannequin it was gonna stand by. That's what we do, we stand by. That's one of the most important jobs there. Because if you're not standing by when they need you, and when they need you, they need you. Damn, damn, not good, not good. Anyway, this uh, was one of my favorite dresses of the fashion show. This was my little black dress modeled uh, by a dear friend and other amazing artist of mine. Um, I, I say mine like I own her, but I don't. She just is such a beautiful person and I envy, I don't know if that's even the right word. I envy the grace and luxury that she walks around this earth with. I don't think it's envy. I aspire to be like that. How that? And she's a lovely example, and I really enjoy her in my life. I saw her son the other day walking a dog, and then pictures of his son. So she's a grandma now. Very excited. I'll put it on the hanger and then I'll show you a little bit of, of the dress. So the cool thing about ties, and I hope that you can see this, is that they're made on the bias. They're lined already. They're gorgeous, you know, um, but they have to be hand sewn side by side, in my opinion, for it to be truly a couture garment that when you wear it, it feels like butter. Other fun story about black ties. When I was collecting these black ties, my cousin called me and he's like, hey, I used to wear black ties every day to work. I have a closet full. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with black? I deal of usually with color and pattern and polka dots. That's why my email address is pladampolkadots at gmail.com. Um, has been for years. And then I thought every 
designer needs a little black dress. And there came the little black dress and it turned out to be my favorite. It actually kind of changed the way that I looked at what I want to design next. You know, I'm really, uh, I'm really loving the industrial feel of where we're going in our lives um, and emotionally I feel very industrial sometimes and and I feel that my art that I do represents what I'm going through at the time. This particular piece of fabric that I've made is a gigantic circle. Um, It's like a tube, if I can explain it correctly. And this will be the train portion, and I'm hoping that you can see it. So that's going to end up being the train there. And I wove all of this. This has taken me well over a year, but I'm going to keep going with the tube. But then this is going to be a wedding gown and it's gonna be the most gorgeous wedding gown in the world. I really don't know if I'll have it done by my 2023 fashion show, but it's definitely on my bucket list, just because it's going to take a very long time. I might work on it little by little as we go and keep updating the videos as we go because this is by far going to be my masterpiece before I die. I don't plan on dying, just saying. You know, like this is something I've wanted to do my whole life, you know, and uh, I'm just very excited to be fortunate and have the opportunity to be able to do it right now. I've been putting it off way too long. This dress is fun. Um, this was another fun story about this is that I was with a dear friend of mine and during the COVID pandemic, we set a living room up out front of the house. And um, we kept together by crocheting and like doing anything that was creative at the time. And I really think it kind of like helped me get through a lot of things. Um, being alone was a big one. But also picking my hands back up to create. You know, I felt like I lost a bit, a piece of me during that whole thing so uh, anyway this is what I wanted to show you on this isn't that gorgeous I want to introduce more of this pattern in different ways I do have an outfit that's really risque that I designed and sewn with all of this pattern and um, I'm not going to be showing that on video I'm gonna walk it myself as the designer so that's another big secret for when I have the fashion show. This one I can't take off the mannequin because it's pinned to the mannequin and it's not, it's not a complete design. So that's what's happening with that. Again, another standby. So the plan was to undress the mannequins. Well, these guys have to go on standby because I need the table. You know what I mean, peeps? Well, I can't get the foot back in the stand. What the heck is going on here? All right, I did it. Oh, okay. In my fashion show, um, I want it to be an entire family, you see? That is why all of my designs are different sizes and, um, and I want to cover the whole family. You know what I mean? Literally with fantastic clothing. Uh, it's going to be glorious. Why do I keep losing feet people? Because I'm talking while I'm working. That's why. Okay. All right. This lady's going to tick me off. I have another friend who pointed out that I name everything. Um, I've never named my mannequins.
great. Now that's going to be on my mind. I don't even know how many I have, to be quite honest with you. Anyway. Another favorite of mine. Worn by a lovely, lovely person as well on the fashion show that I have done. Um, she, again, kindred spirit, was also a nurse that took care of my daughter more than once. Very involved in children. This dress, when it flares out and you spin, makes this gorgeous loop and then it's these spin and flare out as well. So the layers of this gown are just phenomenal. The back is phenomenal, okay? And then it goes also into a slight trickle train. But what's awesome about this is that underneath the ties that appear to have a straight kind of line from the top of your tit to the outer bell of the dress. The inside is a tight corset that then has a gorgeous princess skirt. So I'm gonna open it up and try to show you a little bit of that. Important to note that when I sew couture, I mean couture. This entire uh, corset piece here has been hand sewn together, hand everything. Um, gorgeous zipper, liner, yes, okay. So the corset zips up. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think I've taken these off in a really long time. And then underneath here, when it flares, the ties open up. And so it's kind of like a peekaboo gown. And then you see your gorgeous figure. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? All the way down the back. I have never shown my tie creation for this last fashion show this close to the public. So I hope you're enjoying um, look at how uh, hand stitched together, hand tacked all the way through, hand attached to the skirt to create the blue say blouse, little flare, little peekaboo, tie, little thingy, whatever. My stuff's so unique, there's no name for it. You can't look it up in a book. Trust me, I've tried. All right. This one's misbehaving. What I don't like th about this dress and putting it on a hanger is that um, I need to put little hanger loops in it because the it's got a crushed velvet corset top. And so if you pinch a crushed velvet with a pinch pant hanger, you're going to have a mess, okay? You're going to have a crushed, crushed velvet. All right, and it's never gonna come out, especially if you have fabulous velvet. So for now, she's going to hang just like this. Here's another fun guess. All right, so this was a transformation project, which it leans more towards where we're going on um, the future videos is a transformation project. Uh, very sweet mother, um, hard worker, and just lovely girl, um, came to me with a wedding gown to alter because she was going to get married. And then things happened and she did not need the wedding dress anymore. So she gave it to me. All right, so this wedding gown was long all the way to the floor. It had a train, there was beads everywhere. It was very traditional, very traditional, but um, we updated the top, the waistline, and then, I wonder if I can get this down. And then the dress was mine. 
see, as you can see, there was beating. I'll bring it over to you. What was really cool was that she wanted me to transform it into something completely amazing and different. So the hemline, again, all hand, hand hemmed, hand bordered, but you can see how the old wedding gown stopped here. I mean, it didn't stop here. I hope you can see that. Oof. All right. So then I got the dress. I added these also. This flares like you would not believe. I added this for my fashion show, okay? So these um, are lined in this fabulous duck cloth with like a leather-ish, maybe this is vinyl, on sheer fabric, by the way. If you're a seamstress, you know, it is like practically impossible to get those two fabrics to work together, yet I did. Um, it is separate from the dress. Again, I love peekaboos. I love the fact of layers upon layers upon layers upon layers. This here is a belt that was my stepson's. And here's the funny thing about being an artist. So he came to my art show when I had this out most recently. And um, he's like, um, I do believe that's my belt. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? I don't even know how that happened. No idea. Anyway, this has to go on a hanger because I need these black things for a show. So many projects going on at once. So um, in a couple of weeks, and I'll give you more information on that subject in a future video, um, I'm going to be doing this really cool like outdoor fairy light um, tent sale. And a lot of my things will be out there, but I'm not putting my clothing out there because I'm coming straight from one job to I have 30 minutes to literally set up a tent show. Is that possible? I don't know, but I think that I'm going to make it possible because it has to happen. See how this particular hanger has these loops here to hang the dress. This is what I need to put into that other gown. That would be a cool tutorial video because you can only put them in certain spots. You can only, or they won't hold the weight of the dress properly and your dress will actually rip anyway. You can't just stick them anywhere. So next time I do that, I'll make a video. And that happens a lot. These are gonna go away because I would like a really like blank palette while I'm working. So I'm gonna hang these, maybe. We'll see if I can hang them on the wall, which I completely garbage picked, but um, I love. And what I, okay, so these are gonna work as a backdrop, right? Then I'm trying to decide if I'm going to turn them into shades for my great grandfather's house that he built, or if I'm going to use them as my canvas for doing future textile art, like fabric sculpted three dimensionally. That's always been a dream of mine, and I have all this, I have all the stuff, all the stuff to do it. All I gotta do is do it, right? Where am I gonna put these? Running, how am I running out of space? At this gorgeous, gorgeous space here. Where would you put these? Huh? Where'd you put these? I mean, I would hang them on the wall. Yeah, I get it. But I need the wall space. 
Okay. I'm gonna go, nope, in a window's not a good idea either. I know. The hallway. Perfect. Sorry that took so long. It's not like the hallway is miles away. It's that I started going down there and got distracted and picked something up and put it away. So it was in my way. Okay. We're gonna stop here. In my next video, I intend on hanging this, setting a mannequin to the proper dimensions of the client, and then maybe if we have time, taping out the lines of the pattern I intend on putting on there, or draping a shoulder. Because it's, to me, this gown, the shoulder frames your face. And her face is just so beautiful and full of light and deep and just like deep, extremely deep that these shoulders cannot take away from her face, but need to frame and accentuate um, her personally. Yeah, sorry. I think it might be the shoulders. We'll see. Anyways, don't forget to subscribe. Um, RCO Linda and uh, in in Nikki's Nook and there's like so many things and so many ways you can find me on Instagram you can find me on Facebook um, yeah when I have a thousand subscribers on YouTube though I can really talk business have a good day